was enough I'd smile all the time Beyond the best of me There's more than meets the eye All right, beyond the self, a harder look. What does it mean to get beyond the self? You know, what do you have to take a look at? What do you have to understand? Where do you have to go? What are you trying to do? Why are you even here? Probably all of us are looking for a better life, to be happy, to be free, to be healthy, to have a loving family. If you're parents, to be loving with your children. If you're a child, to be loving with your parents. You know, if you're in a relationship, to have a good relationship, whether you're married or you have a boyfriend, girlfriend, or what have you, your friends, it doesn't really matter. Probably everyone's looking to be happy, healthy, free, and abundant. But if you're not, and if you're challenged, if you're missing something, what does that mean? And how do you figure out what it is you need to do and where you need to go? Well, I would say getting honest with yourself is very important. You know, using a mirror, understanding your life, seeing where you have been wrong and where you need to correct your course. You know, as in course correction, take a new course. You know, there's all kinds of ways to look at it. People like taking courses, people like studying, people like understanding, people watch other people to see how do they be, how they are, how they wish to be. You know, growing up as a child, you watch your parents. When you're older, you watch other people. Maybe if you are at work, you watch someone higher up on the ladder, so to speak, or someone who has more money or more things than you wish for that. You may look at another person's body and wish to be more in shape or beautiful or attractive or whatever, whatever you're missing. And I say an honest way to start is to look at your body, to see what it's telling you, to see what it's showing you. You know, are you healthy? Are you happy? Are you in shape? And I don't mean any illusions. I mean, really, if you're out of shape, if you can't exercise long enough, if you can't walk far enough, if you need to lose weight, if you need to gain weight, if there's something missing, if there's something wrong, if you're sick, if your eyesight is poor, if your digestion is poor, you know, if uh, something is wrong with some of your muscles or your nerves or your hearing or your teeth, what, what have you, you know, and I'm not saying this to be disparaging, but obviously your body is talking to you, right? It's telling you where you may need to fix something that's off, right? And a lot of people don't like to hear that, but, you know, you really, really and literally are what you eat. You are how you digest you are how you hear you are how you feel you are what is reflected in the mirror in the morning are you too tired are you getting too old is your skin getting saggy are you energetic all the time i mean these are all honest ways to look at yourself and to see you know it's an easy in some ways solution if you're ready and willing to take the hits okay of let's say not eating properly it doesn't really matter what is a good diet and what is a bad diet to what is told to you is what you should eat or shouldn't eat or what you have money for, what you have time for. You know, an excuse, whatever it is that's getting in your way, something you put in the garbage can, is something you recycle, is something you look at. You know, if you don't have time to exercise, you find the time to exercise and then you'll change your life. And we're looking at getting beyond the self, transforming your life to a better place. So this is in many ways, you know, the beginnings of how you can become better. Right, because when you have more energy, your imagination grows. Right, when you're less stressed, everyone knows with less stress they have more choices. They feel more relaxed. They can come up with better ideas. They can come up with better solutions. You know, you can come up with 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 pathways and ways to be alive that maybe we're missing just a moment before. You know, everyone has an epiphany. Everyone has that time when something goes. Maybe you should do this, or maybe you should stop that. So. If you're drinking too much and you're saying, well, you deserve it because you're stressed or because you have a bad relationship or uh, or too much work or something or other, well, then that's what needs to be looked at. You know, it's not so much alcohol is good or alcohol is bad. And obviously it's not good for your health, but it's like why you're having the drinks is what could be looked at. And then you're not really fighting the habit directly which is usually a losing proposition because if you pretend that the problem's not there and then you're fighting, you know, the drinking, let's say, or you're fighting the eating or you're fighting the prescription drugs, or you're fighting the cannabis, whatever it is, then you're going to lose the fight because the reason that you're doing or, or self-medicating, let's say, is the problem that's bothering you. 
So if you change your job, if you make a better relationship, if you leave a relationship, if you leave a job, if you start to eat better, automatically the need for whatever it is you're using the medication for will go away. And this is where honesty comes in. I mean, if you look in the mirror and you're out of shape, if you look in the mirror and you're looking tired, if you look in the mirror and you're getting too old, right? And and I don't mean by becoming older, but growing old, it's not the same, right? You know, getting older is fine. Everyone gets older. I mean, it's just the nature of being in a body in this reality that, uh, you know, it gets older. Trees get older, they're beautiful, right? You know, some people get older, they're beautiful. Other people get older. I don't think they're getting old. I think they're getting sick. And I think they're getting full of toxins. I think they're getting full of bad food or bad ideas or bad ways of living their life. Right? So if you need to, let's say, if your body's tired, okay, let's go there. And you don't have enough energy or you know, you're, 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 you just feel lethargic all the time. Naturally, probably a detox would work well. Right. So the first thing you can do is to stop eating whatever crap you're eating, whatever that is for you. It doesn't really matter. Right. You know, learn to cook better, learn to eat less, you know, do some studies on what could work for your body, do some research, you know, ask yourself, you know, and again, any excuse that stops you from doing that is 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 an excuse that's in the way of your happiness. And this is only and this video for those that really wish to go beyond the self. So the self, you could say, is your body, right? So you want to go beyond being locked in uh, being even a victim of your own body, right? So if you've eaten poorly for the last 20 years or the last 30 years, maybe you need to fast. Uh, maybe you need to have a colonic, right? Maybe you need to simply eat less or fast from bad foods, right? Fast from sugar or fast from simple carbohydrates or fast from too much coffee or too much sugar or too much, you know, whatever, whatever you need to fast from. And again, it's not that you're a good person or a bad person or a good boy or a good girl or a bad girl. We're simply talking about practicalities in increasing your energy. Maybe you need to sleep more if you're sleeping less. Now, if you're saying your life is such that you don't have enough time to sleep, you know, then you can work backwards. Maybe your job is not right for you right now. Maybe whatever you're doing in life is taking up too much time. You know, we as a species are lucky in that Literally, we are free. We are awake. You know, this thing that's everyone's asleep, everyone's awake. I think that's a lot of BS, to be perfectly honest. Everyone's awake and everyone's asleep. And right? it's what you do when you're awake that reflects the life that you're living. Okay. So if you have a job, let's go there as an example, and it's taking up too much of your time, five days a week, nine to five, you know, nine to six, eight to six, whatever. And you're doing it for whatever reasons. Fill in the reasons you're doing this job. And because of it, you're tired and, you know, it's a chain reaction, so to speak. So you're tired, so you don't have time to cook, so you don't have time to shop, so you don't have time to eat, you don't have time to do the research and what you need. So you get home, you know, you eat whatever, you know, you watch some TV or you read your book or you look at your cell phone, your TV, YouTube, Netflix, and then you go to bed and then you do it again and you go, well, I wish I could eat better, but, or I wish I could have more sleep, but, or I wish I could, you know, have time to, to shop and cook and, and, and make myself some healthy alternatives, but okay. So, you know, it's a cascade effect in that literally for things to change, they have to change. You know, my friend Campbell says that all the time. And a lot of people just don't want to do that or are telling themselves they can't do that. So if you need to change your job and you're going, okay, I have all these debts, I have all this money, then that's what you need to figure out. Maybe you need to move to a smaller house. Maybe you need to sell. Maybe you need to run away and hide in the mountains. Like what's more important? Right? You are gifted with a life. You're gifted with some time here. You're gifted with most of us, you know, have a limited amount, you know, whether it's 90 years, 120 years, let's go to the outside of it. And it's not forever. You know, your true wealth is what you do and create with the time that you're here. So if you get older and tired and less energetic, you know, you can see that's going to reflect in the choices you make and your options, your opportunities and what you get to create as far as your own happiness. So if your life is sitting in a way that, you know, you look in the mirror and let's say you need to lose 10 pounds. That's what you need to do, right? Like how you do it is up to you. It, it's like the, the physical steps, the practical steps, you know, the, the motor requirements to do that, those are actually quite easy once you decide to take on the challenge, right? It's the... 
stopping of the challenge. It's the denial of the possibilities of change that get in the way and stop most of us from reaching our dreams, from reaching our potential. Okay, so like, let's say then, okay, a diet's an easy one. Learn to eat better, learn to eat less, learn to exercise more. You know, if you're walking five minutes a day, walk a half an hour, then walk an hour, go to the grocery store. If it's cold and you can't walk, you know, so you, you've got to do it anyways, take a long walk. Whatever's stopping you from becoming a better you is what you can look at, what you can write down, what you can figure out and what you can go beyond. These are easy steps. Let's look at another one. So let's say you're a parent and you're having a bad relationship with your children. Okay, using that mirror is very important as well. So mirror, mirror, right? So you look on the wall, so you can use the mirror to look at your body and then you can figure out the physical things of what's wrong. Okay, that's a physical way of doing it. That's an easy way. You need to, you know, if you're bent, you need to exercise. If, if you're stiff, you can, you can learn to be unstiff. If your eyes aren't working, there's a million ways you can fix your eyes as well. Whatever it is, you know, if your hearing is bad, maybe you're not listening to the world properly. If your digestion is bad, maybe you're eating poorly. You know, if you're moving slow and you're lethargic and you're full of shit, you know, maybe you need some colonics, right? There's nothing but opportunities out there to fix your body. Now, for looking, you know, beyond the self, mirror, mirror, uh, a lot of us, not myself personally, but a lot of us have had children. So what are the children sharing with you? What are they reflecting back to you? Are you seeing things in your children you like? Maybe you can emulate that. Are you seeing things in your children you don't like? said instead of trying to change them to be more like you or to reflect on how they are not living exactly the kind of life you would like to live look at them see what they're doing see what you like see what you don't like reflect that back to yourself and understand how all change begins here here right all change and the harder the solution, like let's say you have to get, you have to leave a relationship. Okay. So, or let's say you have to be harder with your children if you have younger children. Let's say you have to homeschool them if you don't like what's going on in school. The harder or the more challenging the solution, of course, the bigger the reward. Always, always works that way, right? If you're in a long term relationship that is horrible and you have to leave, then leave it. If, uh, you know, you're not getting along with your children and they want to live a life that's beyond what you think is acceptable. You know, I've heard a lot of parents say, well, my kids have gotten jabbed or my children are living this kind of life or, or they're being, you know, this way. What are you going to do? It's like once an adult or a person is beyond a certain age, you know, maybe as a mother or father, it's time to say goodbye. You know, and, and I'm not trying to be cruel and I'm not trying to be harsh, but maybe it's time to let them go do what they need to do, you go do what you need to do, and then you can show by example, perhaps one day, how you've changed your life to the better, whatever that is for you, and that may reflect in a positive way on your children. And if not them, it'll reflect in a positive way on someone else. Right? So really what it comes down to is it's the selfish ideas of what we need to do and what is possible that stops most of us from growing beyond ourselves. In other words, if you want to become a better person, maybe you won't be a better brother to a sibling related by blood, but maybe you'll be a better brother to this new person you meet in the next neighborhood you move to. You know, you never know. If you're a mother and you're, you did, let's say you, you did a poor job raising your children or a father. Okay. A lot of us or a lot of stories I've heard have come to that where, you know, you're 40, 50, you have kids and in one way or many ways you've stuffed up as they like to say in Australia, you've been a poor parent, whatever the reason, you're a single parent, you're a double parent, <laughs> you were a triple parent, you know, you did too much work, you, you, you did no better because you had them when you were young, uh, you, you, you had sex and oops, you made some children and now you, you know, you have some problems when you're older, it doesn't really matter. You can learn to become a better person if you've been a mom and become a better mom. And it won't necessarily be for your biologically related children. And that's just the bullet you get to bite from the life that you've lived. So maybe you'll be 50 and you'll be better at parenting now and your kids don't want to talk to you anymore because let's say they believe or they feel for whatever reasons, whether it's it's honest or not, that you are a horrible parent. So they don't want to talk to you anymore. They don't want to listen to you. You know, that's fine. So maybe you go live in another city. Maybe you go live in another country. And maybe your next door neighbor has some children and that children ends up spending some time with you. And now you're a better parent because you've learned from your mistakes. 
you know, there's a balance in the world, right? And it's not necessarily the way you want it to be, right? The world knows better than us where our energy needs to go, where our energy needs to flow, how we need to grow. So maybe there's an imbalance. You know, we're all one. People like to say that, you know, you help another, you help yourself, the, the planet, everyone's here in this plain planet, whatever. So maybe you don't get to help the way you want to, maybe the way your head wants to, right? Because if you become a better person, you will automatically help whoever you come in contact with just by being a better person, even if it's with a smile, even if it's helping men defense, literally or figuratively, even if it's helping with children, even if it's with, you know, giving them something that you couldn't give. Let's say with, if you had children when you were 22, you made some mistakes. Now you're 52. Maybe you don't get to fix the little, you know, little boy or little girl you raised because you made whatever mistakes you made. That's your life. You made that life. You suck it up. Take it in. And maybe then the next child you get to spend time with, maybe it's your sister's children, right? Maybe if you're grandparents, you get to spend time with your grandkids if you're lucky and be better with them that way. You know, this is how there's a balance of life and you get to change by changing yourself. And it really all begins at home, right? It, you know, anytime you point a finger that it's a politician's fault or it's your parents' fault, or it's your, you know, your children's fault, or it's it's your neighbor's fault, or it's your boss's fault, or it's the monetary system, or or it's the climate, <laughs> or or it's the lack of food. You know, really, that's all a lot of nonsense because then you're becoming a victim uh, to someone else's choices for you, and that's just nonsense. No one can make you do anything, right? You can sit down and do nothing, even if you have to die. Let's say, and that's you know the ultimate in sacrifices. Probably it's not, but let's say it is. No one can force you, right? They they can they can they can threaten, they can coerce, they can suggest, they can scream, they can have tantrums, you know, they can point even a gun, let's say, if you want to take it to an extreme or hold a knife under your throat. But no one can control your body, right? You have voices in your head, we've done this, bugs in your system, they can make suggestions between your ears, but if you go to your guts, you go to your heart, the final choice is always yours. Is it hard? Yes. That's where heroes are born though. Is it almost impossible? Could be. You know, that's where challenge comes in. Can we increase our energy through, you know, the suggestions I made at the beginning of this, if you eat better, if you laugh more, if you exercise more, if you breathe, if you stretch, if you detox, if you have a colonic, you know, it's another way of detoxing. You know, if you fix your eyes by by looking and understanding how watching nature, flowers, like taking in the natural world could help. If you listen more, you could you can you can get your hearing. If you get rid of stress, your guts will be better. You know, it's a, it's li literally an endless list of how you can help yourself because it's the same list you made in harming yourself. And that will increase your energy. And the reason I'm mentioning that is from that your intuition will grow, your imagination, your choices. You know, I saw an old chart that fear is almost a flat line, flat line dead, you know? So not so many ripples in the sound wave, whereas love has many more ripples. And from that, it hits many more points of potential. Meaning, in my understanding, and from my experience, more inspiration, more intuition, more chances to get an idea of what you can do next. Now, is it easy? No, a lot of people have epiphanies. In fact, I think we have epiphanies all the time. Everybody gets, you know, strikes, lightning strikes of intuition. And those are the easy parts. All right, all right. I've done a lot of In Love Unlimited coaching and I will leave the links below if anybody wants to do this work with me. Uh, you know, Campbell and I have Freedom's Calling You, The Life's Lost Purpose, our nine video series. I'll leave the links below. You know, we do one-on-ones or you can just come on and join us for some of our Zooms and, and have some chats that way. You know, all of this is possible, but it's the actions to make these choices real that most people run away from. Why? Because it's hard. Why? Because it's difficult. Why? Because it's not easy. And as they say, it's not the path which is difficult. It's the difficulty that is the path. In other words, we all have a life. We all wake up every day. We have no choice but to make choices. We have no choice but to be alive. And it's those challenges and how you face them is going to reflect back to you and how your life grows or doesn't. So it could rot and it can compost. It can go back down to, you know, its core parts, which is, you know, let's say you die and you go back to the ground or your energy goes back to the all of everything. And that's fine. 
you know, because that's natural. And that could be, you know, you could lie down and rot in a forest and you'll be dead soon enough. But if you don't want to do that, you know, you, you want to do the opposite of that. You want to grow, you want to get bigger, you want your vibration to get higher. Well, then it's the challenge, the friction, the effort, you know, that makes the heat that generates something new. And yes, it is a stress, but there's, you know, you get stressed bad if it's not your fault. Or you can get, use the stresses, you know, like weightlifting or climbing a mountain or, or the stress of a challenge to make yourself stronger, more energetic and better. So that's a simple way to look at it. You can use people as a mirror, you know, and anytime you're blaming, anytime it's someone else's fault, anytime at all, you're saying, you know, even if it's a circumstance of living to, let's say you, let's say you have a neighbor. Okay, they're making too much noise. They're 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 throwing garbage into your your yard. Uh, their tree is overgrowing, and the sap is getting on your car. You could say that's not your fault because you're not doing any of that. You know, you can call the police, or maybe it's time to move. Right? Maybe the world is saying, get off your ass, sell the house if you're renting, stop renting, and go somewhere else. Maybe it's time to leave the country. Maybe it's time to go to a different part. I don't know. If you're having a bad time, or something is not feeling like you want to experience it more, whether it's at a job or a relationship or with your own children, you know, with your parents doesn't matter. Again, that's when you get to see it's time for you to move, right? I had relationships before, even with friends where they would never change and they were wrong. And for years, even a decade talking to some people and going, why are they always this way? Why are they always unfair to me? You know, why every time I talk to them and they're wrong, they're, and I go, wait a minute, you know, I call them, I visit them, they come over to my house, I let them in. I don't have to do that anymore. Right? You can stop being friends, even if you've been friends for 50 years. You can you can stop having a relationship, even if you if you've been in a relationship with your parents. You know, sorry to be harsh, but if they're not changing and they're doing what they're doing and you love them, that's fine. But still maybe you have to leave and never see them again. And again, maybe you'll meet other old people if you want to help parents along that you'll help that are open to your suggestions. Maybe you have too much history with your parents, too much history with your children, too much history with your relationships, and they can't change. But if you know change is required and they can't change, guess who it's up to? That's right. You go look in the mirror and you point, it's up to you to make your change. I've had to figure it out. I've had to move from relationships. I've had to move from countries. I've had to leave so much behind. But in doing that, I've got to open my vistas, my views, my energy, my potential. And every day I meet new people. Every day I get to chat with new people. You know, every day I get the opportunities to use what I'm growing with and sharing. And it's coming back to me and not in the ways I thought. Right? It could be a stranger in the street. It could be a new person coming into your life. It could be just with yourself. And you're happy with the birds and you're happy with the flowers. Maybe you're going to grow a beautiful garden with your new energy. And that garden is going to bring lots of butterflies and those butterflies are going to fly away one day and they're going to land on a little girl's or a little boy's lap and influence them to make the world a better place by watching how the butterfly transforms and is beautiful. Let's say. So look at that. So simply by getting enough energy, moving to a place by yourself in the woods, let's say getting a plot of land or squatting on a plot of land if you don't have money, doesn't really matter. Making those flowers, getting the butterflies and the butterflies fly a thousand miles you know, I've heard the monarch butterflies fly from Mexico to Canada. So fly 2,000 miles, land on a little girl's lap, and influence her to change the world. You've changed the world by your actions. There you go. I think they call it the butterfly effect. And it has nothing to do with what you wanted to do directly. It has nothing to do with wanting to help your children in a specific way. That's all ego. That really, really is saying they have to do this, or she has to do that, or he must change. Even the politicians that are doing bad things on, in the world, they have to change. They have to stop. Yes, they are being evil if they're doing evil things, but they're being evil to themselves and the people that are listening. You don't have to listen. I can't stand the chemtrails that come every day, but if I allow them to make me unhappy, then they win and I'm creating an unhappy world. I've seen the sun come out for me in the middle of a cloudy chemtrail day when my energy is in a good place because my dream is it's a sunny day. Does it happen all the time? No. Today, it's a beautiful day. Yesterday was a horrible day. You know, I can see the difference in my energy. So I have to wonder how that's reflecting me. How do I put chemtrails in my mind, let's say? How do I get cloudy up here and then I'm not creative? How do I get the blue skies of my imagination and the sunshine? And how do I let that in? And then my imagination grows. And then I do things like this video. 
And then I get to share with you, whoever's listening, whoever's enjoying, whoever gets to see this. So this is what I'm saying. If you change yourself, you change your reflection, this is how you fix your karma. This is how you change. You don't necessarily get to see the little girl whose butterflies landed on her lap 2,000 miles away. Maybe you don't get to see the next generation of the changes you make now. But it doesn't really matter. You could intuit that by being a better person, being a creative person, being a beautiful person, being a loving person, you know, being a healthy person, being an energetic person, will change something, even if it's just you. We'll make a better vibration into this reality. And it's not up to you to choose how that happens, really. Nature just works its magic. And when you're a better person, when you're making a better life, when you're helping instead of hurting, when you're growing instead of just, you know, if you're, you know, if you're, you're enhancing instead of destructing, your efforts will naturally make the world, this place, this dream, something better, right? And who knows how it's going to happen? Who knows how it's going to change? You know, all the history and I've done many videos about this, all the information we have of the past, it's all second, third, 10th hand, even what your parents tell you, who knows what's true, who knows what's not. You really don't know anything other than what's going on in your life. You know if you're being better, you know if you're creating better, you know if you're doing something more beautiful, you know if you feel good, you know if you feel shitty, right? You know if you're healthy, you know if you're not. You can, no one can argue with that because you don't need anyone's opinion, right? You just sit in a room, look in a mirror, figure it out for yourself, and you will see for yourself, because only you need to give yourself answers. Only you need to be satisfied with your actions or inactions. Only you need to choose what's better for yourself. And then you get your answers. And it's nobody's business. It's nobody's influence. None. None whatsoever. If there's a challenge, you go, oh, but the politicians, but the money, but the this, but the that. Then that's the challenge you ask for. Whatever's in front of you, we ask for it. It's the best way to look at this life. Whether that's true or not. If you look at it from a practical place, it's the best way to look at things. Because if you're a victim, you can't do anything. If you say you've asked for it, you can make changes. So accept the challenges rising, accept what's in your face, accept what's come to you, accept it as something you asked for, and then you can find a solution. If you're a victim, you can't do anything but sit there and cry like a baby. So I would feel those are the two choices we have. You're a big baby crying that it's not your fault, that someone else is to blame. You know, doesn't really matter who, take your pick. Or you can say, this is what I asked for. This is the challenge in my lap. This is the challenge in my face. And then do whatever it takes. And whatever that butt, when that big butt gets in your way, but I can't, that's your challenge to get over, to transform, to change, to drop, to kill, to throttle, to starve. However you want to look at the analogy, there's where your challenge lays and lies, and that's how you can grow into a better life. Mirror, mirror. Use it. Use it for your body. Use it in your relationships. You know, Use it for the circumstances in your life. If you're looking at something, you could say it's a mirror. If your neighbor's being horrible, how are you being horrible to yourself? Let's say if your neighbor's being encroaching, how are you encroaching on your own happiness? If your neighbor's polluting, let's say throwing garbage, how are you throwing garbage in your own dreams? That's the way I would look at it. If your children are ungrateful, how are you? How are you ungrateful? How are you ungrateful? Doesn't have to be to them. Could be to yourself. Could have been to something you did in the past. If you don't have enough of something. How have you given yourself this poverty situation? If you don't have enough love, if you don't have enough money, let's say, if you don't have enough free time, you know, if, if you're impoverished in one way or several ways, how have you impoverished yourself? What have you chosen to end up in a life? let's say, where you're working too much for not enough. You know, you made those choices, even if you have to go back to when you were six, and now you're 66, and you have to look over 60 years of your life and pick up the garbage. Well, if you've polluted your yard for 60 years, then you got a lot of garbage to clean up. That's the way it goes. And if you leave it behind, I think even, you know, if, if people believe in reincarnation, if you leave the garbage behind, that's another way to see it. You're just going to have to circle around or you're going to leave it for your kids, which is even more horrible, which is really you're leaving it for yourself if you've made your kids. So any way you look at it, best to clean up whatever mess you've made in this life, energetic, physical, spiritual, emotional, because you're going to be better off one way or another into your eternity, into your infinity. And then you can't help but help yourself, you know, elect to govern yourself, elect to choose what you need to do beyond the self, in love unlimited, 
I'll leave all the links below. I'm happy you're here today. Thank you for allowing me to share this. Please like and subscribe and pass it along. And I'll see you again very, very soon. I love you all very much. Was enough.